Australia, the land down under. So far under, it's starting to stink. The name's Chapel, Chris Chapel. People call me agent. They also call me in when no one else wants to do the job. But business these days was slower than a hibernating koala. And that's when she walked in. You don't look very tall. I try to be. You've got a case. Someone's making trouble down in Chinatown. Would you call it big trouble? Wrong genre. Try again. Sorry, Angel. I don't see what this has to do with me. Because you uncensor things. That's what you do. What's with the car? In case anyone wants to go for a spin. Just don't drive too fast. Speeding was the least of my worries. This new case smelled like trouble with a capital T. I just hope Australia won't be the land where I'm buried six feet down under. Chris, why are you staring at me? Australia was founded by a bunch of criminals. Today, they're called politicians. I got word about John Hugh, a former politician who was a founding member of something called the Australian Values Alliance. If someone was ruffling up the feathers of the local Chinese, that's a good place to start. So you're one of those racist Australians who hate Chinese people. Well, I'm a Chinese myself. So how can I be racist against Chinese? He had a point. And he also had a pretty good idea who was really behind this Chinatown chop suey. They, the Chinese consulate in Sydney plays a large role, um, so-called managing the local Chinese communities here. Yeah. How do Chinese Australians feel about uh, Communist Party infiltration of well, Australian society? Well, most people keep silent and they may have to obey and accept that kind of influence because if you stand up, actively uh, campaign against them, you probably don't get a visa to visit China. What do you think could be done to tackle uh, Chinese Communist Party infiltration of Australia? First of all, don't fear of the authorities because they cannot really control this country. We are not under China uh, control. And not second, yet. not yet, and hope will never. And we are not part of uh, Chinese territory here. Secondly, is to expose their tactics, what they do to you, to the general public, and let other people be aware those tactics, tactics they use to try to scare you off or win you over. So don't be silent. Don't be silent. That's right. I should have known that it was my old nemesis, the Chinese Communist Party. The whole situation had their dirty red fingerprints all over it. But I needed more on what they were doing in Chinatown and how. Time to rattle some cages. Shelly, I want you to call the Chinese embassy. Make them sweat. Stay away from the United Front. I'm sorry, I don't speak Australian. Someone didn't want me getting any closer. It's not the first time I've gotten a kick out of a case, but I was about to find out that I wasn't the only one with a boot on my neck. Great, now no one's gonna wanna talk to me. I thought you were trying to quit. I'm down to two packs a day. I've tried the Chinese embassy multiple times. I don't think they want to talk to you. Yeah? Sounds like they'd get along with my ex-wife. You don't have an ex-wife. Don't remind me. When you hit rock bottom, you can't get any lower. Not until you bring out the jackhammer. <sighs> Trying to solve this mystery was like looking up the nostrils of a sleeping wombat. Pitch black, twice as smelly. I decided to get out and clear my head.
This must be the place. Who are you? My name is uh, Shen An. Uh, I've been in Australia almost 30 years. Shen An was deep with the Chinese Australian community. He had information for me about the United Front and their shady partner, the Australian Council for the Promotion of the Peaceful Reunification of China. What is the United Front Work Department? A reunification, the peaceful reunification of China, they controlled by United Front, uh, United Front of China. That organization in, in Sydney, in Australia, is their agent. Then through this agent, control a couple hundred of so-called Chinese communities, organization in Sydney. And it's all tied to the United Front? They're all under the control. I call Australia, and it's uh, the disaster area of, of this sort of uh, influence from the Chinese. Can you give me some examples of how they operate? Oh, easy. First, the Chinese government, they control most of Chinese media in Australia by using money to corrupt most of the media, not only Chinese media. You mean English language media? That, that's right, yeah. In, not, not only Chinese, English language media as well. But the situation was getting worse and worse. Uh, How does the Communist Party manipulate the Chinese Australian community? They threw their uh, so-called community leaders. As I can say 99% of those community leaders, they are manipulated. 99%? 99. All, almost like 100%. 100%. How are critical voices silenced? They try to isolate you people in Chinese community, and they try to ruin your names. They turn you into yeah, the enemy. Yeah, yeah. They uh, yeah, turn, turn you to the, to the enemy. For example, we against the Chinese communist regime. But now a lot of Chinese, obviously Chinese in Australia, they look at you, oh, you, you are against our government, our party. Do ordinary Chinese Australians know what's happening? I don't think so. I don't think so. A uh, lot too many Chinese, ordinary Chinese. What does this mean for Australia? <laughs> Communist Party, in my, in my eye, in my mind, it's the evil in the world, in human history. It's the, the monster. It can only bring disaster to human society. I can tell you my experience, personal experience, we suffer. I know the Chinese Communist Party's nature. The nature, their nature, is to control and they never give up their power to the people. That's the communist, so-called Communist Party. Yeah. Things were spinning out of control faster than a Tasmanian devil, but I wasn't any closer to rumbling the United Front, and that's when I got the feeling someone was following me. No, you're not a very good private dick. No, but I'm a good public one. Hello? What? Shelly, we've got a break. Some kookaburra's got proof this goes right to the top. I am the son of the Red Revolution. Jiang Xiaogang, brainwashed by the communists in China, he fled to Australia, where he tried his hand at the dirtiest business of all politics. You're talking about ideological education to brainwash. The well, I'm every, yeah, every uh, working unit, you know, company or whatever, uh, uh, government office or school. So I don't like this, so I complained and some of my colleagues said, you can be quiet because if you speed out, maybe get in trouble. John got in trouble, all right. He got involved in the pro-democracy movement in China. And when he came to Australia, the Chinese Communist Party followed. An Australian political party, the Unity Party, 
asked John to run in a local election. But then the leader, Peter Wong, got a call from the Chinese consulate. The Wong said, uh, consulate asked him why you put uh, uh, pro-democracy mo uh, movement activity as your candidate. If you're doing so, we will uh, ask the Chinese community vote against you. So the Peter Wong said, uh, maybe you can make a deal, say you quit from the uh, pro-democracy movement and ask the council to give you a visa to go back to China. So I said, no, I can't, I can't do that. You said no? No, I said, I said no. I said, no, I can't do that. I, I don't want to do any deal with uh, uh, the, the Chinese candidate. I still want to fight for democracy, for uh, human rights. So the Chinese consulate was essentially trying to undermine Australian democracy. Everywhere. What are some other ways they pressure the Chinese-Australian community? The fear, the many a member of the Chinese community, the fear if they do anything or say something wrong, I mean something wrong to communists, then we deny the your visa to back to China. And also, you know, most Chinese uh, members of the Chinese community have a relative in China. Maybe their parents, maybe their, uh, you know, brothers, sisters. And if you have no chance to go back to see a relative, you know, that's a, that's a, a great uh, Pain, you know? So the Communist Party basically holds uh, Chinese Australians' families inside of China as hostages. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what can the Chinese Australian community do in response to this? Well, uh, I think most uh, members of the Chinese community, majority, they don't really uh, feel there's a problem. Uh, most of them are actually thinking about uh, make money. They don't want to make trouble with the Communist Party. I, I re need the Australian society to understand the Communist uh, regime, what they are. The many people think, oh, China is good, they have an economic uh, booming, and uh, look the nice, they so, yeah, look nice, but they double-faced. They, when they need you, when they're doing business, they, they face, but when they try to uh, control you, they different face. I had a bitter taste in my mouth like I'd eaten a bucket of Vegemite. The Communist Party had its clapper claws everywhere. No place was safe. No one can be trusted. How can you fight something like that? Thanks, doll. Almost got me in the pipes. Forget it, Chris. It's Chinatown. And that's when it hit me. In a world where the Chinese Communist Party makes everyone into an enemy, you've got to find someone to watch your back. Here. This is on me. Shelly? I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. We've known each other for 10 years. 